Welcome, Welcome back, back, pop stars. I'm Rizzo. I'm Benji. And today we're going to do a little reevaluation of the Halloween classics, Halloween Town. Before this week, I had never watched before. And now I kind of want to quickly scrub through these and see what it is you guys are all obsessed about. I am a little bit newer to the boat, but definitely older than him. And I think it's uh, interesting to look at these without a nostalgic lens. I think there's a charm to it. I don't hate these films. Steve White, one of the producers, this stemmed from an idea from his daughter who basically came up to him and asked, where do the monsters go? after October 31st. Cute. Yeah, it's a kid's movie. Oh. I'm not gonna shit on a kid's movie. I just didn't grow up with it. And even when I was a kid, I would have probably hated this because I was pretentious. Yep, he thought he was a little director. Benji, what should what should our pop stars do? Give us a comment, tell us hi. Make sure to hit that like, because that's your job. Yeah, and if you don't, that's a paddling. I mean, yes, daddy. <laughs> if you're not subscribed, hey, you know, if we make you laugh, uh, maybe hit the subscribe button. All right, let's just do it. Let's watch the Halloween Towns. Let's talk about stuff while we look at clips of the Halloween towns. We're not watching them. It's not a reaction. We're presenting them to you. <laughs> Three, two, one. Engage. Engage. Okay. All right, so that's my first note. There is some god awful music, and I hate the theme in this movie. I have no nostalgia for this, so I hate it. Yeah. I ha oh. It's so bad. And here's the thing. I am a huge fan of the composer of this movie. He is the co-founder, lead singer, and keyboardist for the band Devo. He's responsible for Rugrats, the Royal Tenenbaums, Crash Bandicoot, the video game, and the Lego movie. So these are all things that I like the score of. So he's got bangers out there. I fucking hate this it's theme song. <laughs> I will say I didn't realize that I liked this music yeah. until I think it was like this year when people started doing TikToks at the actual Halloween town. And I'm like, oh, it's getting towards Halloween season. So it's cozy for people with nostalgia. Oh, by the way, this is Halloween Town 1. This premiered on October 17th, 1998. So, oh, wow. We start off with the Cromwell kids uh, and they can't do Halloween shit, much like me back in the day, which is probably why I couldn't watch this film. At least your parents had a reason. She has a reason reason too she just didn't tell them i know but that's what i'm saying your them. parents told you your yeah. reason it was because he was religious if you don't know what? Mom, i'm 13 i'm certainly old enough to make my own choices yeah i guess so is there an age for that i love how her friends do not back her up yeah. at all it's funny because i didn't watch this when i was 13 or younger but i'm sure i would have been all like 13 she's an adult <laughs> she might as well just move out it's just one night what is the big deal there are just some things about halloween that you don't understand here's the part that triggered both of us when we watched it together you're protecting us from being anything but a bunch of vegetables hey look i'm a potato okay still on your side marnie oh no marnie no it's too dangerous okay there are things about vegetables that you don't understand there it is i was big when i would have caught a quick back then from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> then we get Debbie Reynolds as Grandma Aggie. I'm just gonna say this right up front. She is useless. <laughs> this character, how many times does she lose her powers in these films? Well, every film. Every film. Except the fourth one, which she's not even in. <laughs> and we'll get to that. Again, I have no nostalgia for her. But you know, she trained Marnie and her use is Did there. she though? Her I use, thought her mom trains Marnie. Her use is off screen. So then Grandma Aggie arrives. Clearly the kids are excited to see her. She only comes once every Halloween. For one night. Grandma's a cool and all, but if you saw your grandma once a year for like five hours, regardless of how many gifts and stuff she bring, I'd be like, who are you? No, 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 no. You're telling me if there was a lady who showed up in your life once a year, but brought bomb ass gifts every time, you wouldn't be excited to see her? I guess so. Well, I You'd guess, be yeah, like, that's Santa. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you just described Santa. <laughs> Clearly mom and grandma don't get along well. Mom doesn't want to raise her kids as witches because mom wants her to be normal. But obviously we know that being normal is vastly overrated. Oh, that's like what that's what your shirt that's says. That's what Grandma Aggie says in every single Halloween Town trailer on Disney Channel. Being <laughs> <laughs> normal is vastly overrated. Find out more about Marnie Crumble's family's vastly strange powers. Powers? I like how she tells Grandma, don't tell them anything about Halloween Town. And Grandma's like, yeah, I won't. <laughs> I won't. Immediately goes tells them a bedtime story. <laughs> your home, I mean. She said, don't tell them don't about home. Do. Your home. I won't tell them a thing. She's a straight up liar. She's a liar. Grandma that Aggie's a, a straight up liar. Witch's 13th Halloween is supposed to mark the completion of her training. Marnie's training doesn't at least begin tonight. Her powers will be lost forever. Yes, 
And she'll finally be human. I came to ask for your help. She also needs backup, to which I'm gonna side with mom on this one. These type of films are always like, hey, I need to enlist your kids to help me against an evil ancient power. And I'm like, no. Every day I find another neighbor has changed, turned hateful, frightened. And soon after that, they disappear altogether. It's as though something or someone is trying to return us to the dark times. And I fear my powers alone may not be enough to stop it. I'm going to go ahead and side with Grandma Aggie because it's pretty shitty that her daughter is like, hey, I know there's an evil force taking over your hometown where I grew up, but also get out of my house. Get the fuck <laughs> yeah, out of here. I'm not worried about you or your safety or well-being <laughs> or anybody else that I grew up with. Figure that shit out yourself. She's going back to Halloween Town. The kids sneak after Grandma Aggie and they go to Halloween Town. And I actually really like the bus sequence. I thought that was a cute like intro into the new world. Yeah. I guess it's kind of like the cantina scene at Star Wars. Pretty much any scene where suddenly the normal characters are thrust into the world of crazy shenanigans. Or Magic School Bus. <laughs> yes. But on the Magic School Bus. Right the river of lava. Oh no, Grandma, where'd she go? What are you doing? We're gonna lose. Get here. Careful, she could be a mirage. <laughs> so, I mean, he's not wrong. Like, we don't know anything about this place. We just flew on a bus to another dimension, and now everyone is a monster. Like, who the hell is this little girl? I don't know. Did you see Sophie get on the bus? Because I was with you. We got on the back entrance of the bus, and you know where I left Sophie? Asleep in her goddamn bed. Who the fuck is this? The kids get to Halloween Town, and they're immediately approached by Stranger Danger, an old man who wants to give them free candy. And I love that even the little Littlest Cromwell was like, no. No. Nice try, you weirdo. Hello there. I don't believe we've met. And that means I'm in trouble because the mayor's supposed to know everybody. It's a weird flex, too. He didn't just say, hey, I'm the mayor. He had to, like, try to play it off as cool, like, I don't know you. And the mayor is supposed to know everybody. And if you didn't and pick up those context what? clues, I'm the mayor. I'm the mayor. <laughs> Does that impress you? Does that impress you, little kid? Do you want me? Do you want my lollipop? Get the fuck out of here, Calabar. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Howdy, Mayor. What's the rush? Here we get one of the most iconic characters. I would say probably the most iconic character of the Halloween Town because I, I knew who he was. Really? Interesting. Yeah. I would argue that it's, you know, Grandma Aggie. But like for but, people who don't know anything about the yeah. series, I know who Benny was. I didn't know his name, but I knew that there was a skeleton who drove around kids. In a taxi cab? In a taxi cab. Interesting. I do like the practical effects on Benny. It's charming. Exactly. His head is massive, but we love it. Hi, yeah. Oh, yeah. my stuff. How did you get here? <laughs> On the bus? We want to help you fight the bad thing. Yeah, the bad thing or the force field, whatever it is. You said you needed another Cromwell witch. That could be me. You can train me. So then they see a vision of the future. And this is around the time I start to think, I think that mayor's the bad guy. <laughs> the worst is yet to come. What can we do to stop it? I'll show you. So grandma's plan to save whatever's happening in Halloween Town is for her to create a brew and use the brew to light an amulet and then take the amulet and mail that amulet to myself. And when it arrives, <laughs> she'll blow away Calabar with its light. It's brilliant, 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 I tell you. Genius, I say. Is this where she said she's met Merlin? She says something about Merlin and then later talks about having been in, in King, in King Arthur's, Arthur's court. Yeah. Merlin himself used this talisman to end the Dark Ages over in the mortal world. It's a little recipe that I picked up in the 6th century around King Arthur's time. The the timelines are all over the place. Did what? you know Merlin or not? How old are you, Aggie? Grandma Aggie, how old are you? They also mentioned that the reason that there is a Halloween town even in the first place is that we as immortals were hunting the creatures and the creatures became evil because they were defending themselves. And they're like, hey, wait, whoa, hey, we're not like we're this. We're not actually evil. We're going to make our own separate world, which powerful. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Like, why didn't just get rid of all the humans? That's what I would have done. Some of the citizens of Halloween town are like starting to change. So she decides to go to the mayor to tell him like, yo, hey, shit's going down. I keep telling you. And also I've been a citizen here for like a billion years. Like you should fucking listen to me. I'm goddamn grandma Aggie. Bitch. That would be what I would be saying every day in Halloween Town if I had been there for like a thousand years. I'd be like, I'm goddamn Grandma Aggie, yeah. bitch. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. You are only <laughs> mayor because I allow you to be. I have to apologize to you, Aggie. I didn't take you seriously about this thing at first. I think you've uncovered something very serious. Yeah, as soon as he gave this reaction, I was like, I know. <laughs> oh, this is the fucking bad guy. I was already thinking it around the time we first saw whatever the bad villain is. <laughs> 
I was like, mm, we've only met the mayor, but he seemed nice. He gives candy to children. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He That's gives candy to nice children. Can I get one, please? Please, Grandma, please. Yes. Well, it is the rite of passage for witches your age. Yes. Also, when she was buying her broom, she runs into Luke, who we had seen earlier, who apparently got a facelift and a nose job. If people were smart, you'd be nice to me. I'm friends with some very powerful creatures around here, you know. He literally says that a dark wizard gave him a facelift or like changed his looks. And Aggie is hunting a dark wizard. He's like, hey, a dark wizard gave me a facelift. And she's like, oh, you look so cute. I don't have time for you. I'm looking for a dark wizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I work for a dark wizard. No, that's no, no, no. cool. I, that's cool, kid. I don't have time for you. I'm and your looking dark for wizard. a dark wizard. I'm looking for a dark wizard. What? <laughs> Useless. How old are you? you? Buddy, after about 6,000 years, the old noodle don't cook like it used to, okay? I don't think so. Mommy. So Mama Cromwell comes back in town. Momwell? Yes, Momwell. <laughs> and she's like, hey, stop having fun, kids. We're going back. But there's no bus. And we get like the world's worst Three Stooges routine from the two-headed ticket yeah. person. Oh, Ow! Excuse me. What? what? Will you please tell me what time the next bus leaves to the mortal world? The bus? Which bus? Mortal world? This is when I start to think to myself, I know where Halloween Town is. Where are you going to find a cluster group of the most obnoxious, bumblefucky people around? <laughs> Where on the map in a tiny little country called Genovia? It's too whimsical for its own goddamn good. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone gets anything done. Their mayor is spending his time pulling candy out of his ass for children. He's the mayor, but he's also the town's biggest threat. <laughs> so you're trying to be the world's biggest threat. Use your mayoral status <laughs> to be the world's biggest threat. You know what I think? He has too much dignity to combine the two. The evil guy is like, ah I want yes. to rule Halloween town, but I have to ask the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor seems like a nice guy. Maybe so mom decides to go see the mayor who she doesn't know is her old fling because they want to get the hell out of Halloween Town before midnight, which I don't know if we've mentioned. Once it's midnight, the portal closes and it's only open for another year. It opens every year on Halloween. I have big plans for all of us here in Halloween Town. Oh, and then Luke finally convinces Aggie to <laughs> actually pay attention to him. So then we come face to face with the villain. Kike, he, he's scary as fuck. Oh no, the costume's fucking awesome. Look at that the motherfucker. Awesome. He's terrifying. <gasps> He's also not doing anything. Because he can't. He's scheduled out for mayoral duties, and then he clocks out, and then clocks <laughs> into full-on Calabar warlock mode. Morning, Ralph. Morning, Sam. He's terrifying to look at, but also, what is he really doing other than freezing a few people in their seats? What is he performing? Is he doing, like, operatic performances for all the people that are frozen there and have to watch him? He was he like, might be. I always wanted to be a performer, and now you all have to watch me. Because he's not leaving the theater. He's not even leaving the stage at any point. Get them! What's his plan? What is he You're asking me, because that's my same fucking question. I'm out of here. Beady vanquished by my power! Hmm? I said powers, not flowers. Was mom gonna try and kill that kid? That's a great question. I was literally about to ask. She said vanquished yeah. by my powers. What were you gonna do to that Shoot. little 13-year-old boy? Who clearly was like, oh god, I'm gonna get out of here. It's every man for himself in Halloween <laughs> town. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, Aggie, and Mom both get petrified. The first of many times that Grandma Aggie is taken out of commission. The kids run out of the theater and are promptly not chased by this super evil, all-powerful villain who doesn't want them to leave. He has to give his standing ovation to the audience. <laughs> You're gonna do some shopping? We have to finish that witch's brew. The kids decide to actually finish Grandma Aggie's witch's brew, and we get a, you know, a few fun scenes. I can see how this is considered or regarded as a classic yeah. among young viewers. I use one of these all Gosh, the time, okay? <laughs> Another note too, uh, that was really on fire. That I kid really held that. that. I was like, that's a really good effect. I think would not have that. 1998, <laughs> that she might be holding Child a flamethrower. Child labor laws! We don't even know what those are! Put that kid right in the line of fire, see? But, but I literally, have a hold the fire! My other note here is, can someone explain to me the rules of a ghost? First off, sweating. Second off, interacting with objects. And thirdly, being trapped in objects. <laughs> Maybe sweat boxes are inherently made so that they can hold ghosts. There are things that can hold ghosts. We know this because we've seen Ghostbusters. So maybe it's made out of the same material. 
I don't think they thought that deep into this. Grandma says that spells are stronger when you have more than one witch. You want to help me? Okay. So the kids finish the witch's brew. The amulet lights up. Marnie figures out that the amulet has to light the giant lantern Jack-o-lantern. head. Jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> That's going to do the magical doohickey thing that existed with Merlin and blah, 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 magic. The MacGuffin. Uh, we're saved. Yay! What? Surprise Pikachu face! Follow me! And together, we will reclaim the mortal world which is rightfully ours! It's so funny how these movies, when they're creating their villain, always seems to be born as a direct response to very colonial type backstories where they were kicked out of where they used to live because of humans and now they just want to reclaim their land. And it's like, yeah, man, I don't blame them. (laughs) Like, fucking do that. If I was in Halloween Town, I was like, wait, you mean we didn't used to live in Genovia and we had access to the whole world, but humans are pieces of shit and they forced us onto this tiny little land? Fuck them. (laughs) There's sometimes I'm like, I don't blame the villain. But he's actively saying that he's evil. Propaganda. (laughs) Evil didn't used to be evil until humans, uh, you know, and their elitist uh, terms uh, rewrote history. No, because they still say they're good. She said we were turning evil. Yeah, that's that's the propaganda of the humans. (laughs) You gotta get that out of so your mind. They are evil. You gotta unlearn humanisms <laughs> and embrace the fact that there is no good or evil. It's just what what the what humans said was evil is ugly. Humans said ugly equal evil. Also, humans said that murdering, eating children, giving lollipops to little kids <laughs> is all evil. But you know, throw that out, right? Fuck me, right? It's a kids movie. There's not much more to look into. Think- we are nothing if not two YouTubers <laughs> who like to overthink children movies. I think that's what this is. Gonna be is that what this overthinking Halloween town? <laughs> <laughs> you see, my friends, the power of evil is stronger than good. Believe. So Marnie saves the day, and this was my favorite part. She summons all of her witchy powers to literally drop the amulet. That's it. No, she dropped. The- okay, yes, but no, because the amulet was upside down. So what? her witchy powers flipped the amulet so that it would land gonna, let's, in let's the watch, exact let's right watch this again. spot. Let's we'll watch it again. That's what happened. Witch power. Witch power. <laughs> My darkness will spread unchecked and I will be ruler of both worlds. <laughs> this is the part where Dylan uh, discovers he has powers. He's got tingly fingers. His magic looks like when your hand falls asleep. It's a literal visual representation of, look, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not magic. It's circulation <laughs> shit. Anyway, he laughs, he dies. Silly witches, kids are for tricks. That's the first Halloween town. Halloween town won the first Halloween town. <laughs> pop or stop, Benji? Or is this a pop stop? I mean, we can do it. It's a pop. I'm going to give it a pop. Again, I didn't grow up with it, so I don't have the same nostalgia for it, but you know what? I can appreciate it for what it is. I probably would say this is the most cohesive of all of them. Okay. I think it's the one that offers the most out of its premise. It's called Halloween Town. We go through Halloween Town. We meet the citizens of Halloween Town. It takes place in fucking Halloween Town. Now we move on to Halloween, Halloween Town, Town 2. 2. Which one? I don't remember. Oh, fuck. So Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge premiered on October 12, 2001 and picks up two years after the first movie. Even with me half paying attention, not remembering the name of the movie, <laughs> as soon as this new guy walks up and joins the party and Marnie's like I think this guy's cute I'm like I don't fucking trust him (laughs) and if there's anything I've learned in the last movie and 15 minutes of a second movie it's that the men in Halloween Town not great yeah he walked up and what was the first thing I said to you hey is that the bad guy and I, I know, I know, I know. Before you reach for the comments, don't type anything. Don't type a goddamn thing. I need you to listen for one second. Listen for a second. I know. Kimberly J. Brown and whatever the fuck this guy's name is, they're married. It's adorable. Oh, or they're they dating. Are? You didn't know that? No. Why would I know that? Pop stars, <laughs> resume typing. <laughs> Benji doesn't know. Why would I know that? Dude, it was like all over TikTok. But won't he earn Halloween Town? 
feel like a hundred years to her. This is where their timeline starts Gets wonky. to fall apart. It was already wonky, but now I have questions because here's the thing. If a hundred years in Halloween Town is equal to one year in the human world, and if she knew Arthur and his court in the 1400s. Got it. From the 1400s to what is this? Year 2000? That is 600 years yeah. times 100 years for every one of those years that she was in Halloween Town. Let's assume she was only in Halloween Town for half of the time. She's somewhere around 30,000 years old. That's She's probably 60,000. generous. She's possibly up to 60,000. And also, how do you age in Halloween Town? If Marnie goes to Halloween Town for one human year, but it equals 100 years in Halloween Town or Genovia, Did does it. that mean she comes Marnie back is 100 or does she age 100 years and then come back to Earth and then go back to where she left? Or do you just not age? Because Grandma is 60,000 and she doesn't look a day over 60, yeah, I mean, so hey. good for her. Also, random thing, and we're just gonna start this out with all of my thoughts that have been bugging me. Grandma's 60,000, no? Got it. She's had one daughter in 60,000 years. How does she not have at least 500 kids? Grandma. And, 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 how old is mom? How look, old is mom? Look, I think because we're... if grandma is 60,000, we haven't even played the movie and yet. mom lived in Halloween we're Town just for ranting. most of her childhood, is mom like 20,000 years old? Can, well, can I resume the movie? When does Marnie stop aging? All right. It's a little crowded in here. You want to give me a tour? She then takes him to Grandma Aggie's room. It's like, yo, look at this. You hot for my grandma's room? Does this do it for you, Cal? <laughs> Would that be good for you? Would you like that? Do you know if my parents saw me trying to tour a girl in my bedroom, they'd be like, get that get Jezebel, that Jezebel out of your room. Get that Delilah ass woman out of your bedroom. Weirdly enough, my parents were fine with women being in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's the sound of that. Yeah. It's revealed he is the bad guy, or at least he's up to no good because he steals Grandma Aggie's spell book out of her room, and then the magic stops working. And apparently her spell book is like the Wi-Fi for the family. It's like the router box. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, also, I'd like to talk about the fact that in the first movie they mentioned that cross-world communication is a no-go. They have not figured it out yet were her exact words. Can't we just call her? I'm afraid we haven't worked out long distance is calling between worlds yet. So 60,000 year old Grandma Aggie <laughs> has not figured out how to fucking communicate from one world to the next. Okay, it's a first movie. What happens in the second movie, Benji? In two years, obviously, she Tony Stark's that shit. Headphone. Ew. That's what I said. Wait, did you read my notes? <laughs> no, I just I literally it. said it's <laughs> giving fucking Tony Stark invents time travel. <laughs> in, in one night. In one night. <laughs> Shit. So they go back to Halloween Town. Everything's in black and white, monochromatic, and human. Where's the big jack-o'-lantern? And Grandma Aggie rightfully suspects Marnie's new boyfriend. How? To which what? Marnie responds, God, 60,000-year-old Grandma <laughs> Aggie, obviously my 17-year-old self knows much better than you do. Shut up. I might have just met this guy and... Two years ago, or I guess 200 years ago, some guy that was in love with my mom might have tried taking over the town. But you know what? I know better. Then, surprise, surprise, we get an early villain reveal. It's Calabar's son. What? He's not like his dad, okay? He's not playing both sides. He's not committed to his character at all. The second he was able to reveal it, he goes, guess what? It was me. It's me. You cast this spell in Halloween Town? Just the way it was written in Aggie's little spell book. You naughty girl. <laughs> I could have stolen the book anytime. I wanted you to show it to me because you felt something between us. I wanted you to show it to me because I felt something between us. You know what he's giving? What? He's giving Guy Obsessed with Sidney Prescott yeah. vibes. <laughs> no! Oh, where are you going? You're Calabar's son. I guess I inherited my father's attraction to Cromwell witches. Marty Cromwell, Sidney Prescott, they need to just avoid men altogether because okay. they're ghost-faced in her. You Cromwells brought everyone against him, and then you destroyed him! So that's what this is about. Revenge. Who's revenge? Calabars! <laughs> yeah! So he's stolen Aggie's book, but Aggie's like, I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. To which I was like, oh, that was a figure of speech. Because I was literally expecting you to pull a wow. trick out of your sleeve. Grandma Aggie realizes, oh shit, this gray spell that's turned everything normal and boring. Wouldn't you know it, it's turned my house normal and boring. Oh God. And I can't find my goddamn book, but don't worry. I know where a second book is. But what he doesn't know is there are two. Uh, 
Well, then let's look for it. Grandma Aggie gives up after like two seconds of searching. We can't find one. I haven't seen that other spell book for decades. Perhaps it's lost. Why are you smiling? If it's lost, I know just where it is. For certain, you have to be lost to find a place that can't be found. Now we're on to another thing to which I'm like, Grandma Aggie, I don't even know if I want to follow <laughs> you to wherever the hell we're going because I don't think you have your shit together. You had no faith in her at this point. You were just like, oh, we can't find it in the house. So where must it be? We fuck on over to Quartz, who I guess exists as like a dumping ground for things between both worlds. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the lore of this world. But even when they get to Gort's place, wouldn't you know it, Cal's already anticipated that they would return to look for her book. So he had already already bought the book. Grandma, you are two for two. You're 0 for two. You're 0 That's for it. two, You're Grandma. For... I say we head back to the mortal world. The spell. Now Aggie is losing her powers again because she's turning into boring gray spell human. Uh-huh. Grandma. Although she's not even that boring. She's not. I said she may be gray, but Ooh. she's still extra. This spell, it's supposed to keep us from getting outside, right? What if we tried to go somewhere else other than outside? Time travel. Grandma, do you have a spell for time travel? Oh, I, do, I believe I do. You guys had fucking time travel? When grandma goes, ah, I got a trick up my sleeve and she summons the taxi cab driver, I want to be like, fuck you, grandma. The trick up your sleeve is goddamn time travel. The spell that you, by the way, know off the top of your head. Right. She didn't have to look that up. No. She was just like, oh yeah, here it is. I'm literally half conscious and turning into a human, but I can still write down this spell perfectly fucking for you to follow. time travel is the trick up your sleeve. It's <laughs> the only trick up your <laughs> sleeve. This is why I don't trust you. It's bro. no fun if you just just solve the problem immediately. <laughs> All these movies are just different levels of her training Marnie. You know, that <laughs> would be a better explanation. Yeah. She's like, oh no, Marnie, I'm turning gray. What are you gonna do? Time travel, good job. Here's the spell. Oh no, now I'm gray. <laughs> I don't want to give them that much credit though, because <laughs> it doesn't feel like that's what they wanted. You're right. That's giving you way too much credit. All right, now see, that's a little too far back. Nice job of escaping my spell. What time is it? I think it's revealed here that Cal has been planning this for like 10,000 years. It was like a few hundred years. He bought it like a like 50 or oh, like 100 yeah, years see. prior or something like that. I don't think the spell book is here. Cal bought it from me about uh, 50 years ago. I don't want to beat a dead horse but what are these old people doing <laughs> they've got years to plan their shit they've got time traveling spells up their <laughs> their sleeve what are they doing they're bumbling through a kids movie that's they're what they're Genovian doing through and through marnie figures that the spell is called apart and she said it backwards which is how luke suddenly turned back into a goblin but luke figured that out luke figured that she out she didn't believe it god damn it apart so they travel the timeline to go back to the future, but they're not quick enough, and Cal is able to go to the party and transform everybody at the party into a creature. This is one of my favorite parts in all four movies. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. Okay. Boom. Doors are closed. They're stuck in Halloween Town for what will feel like a hundred years to them. And there is havoc in the mortal world. Her family is in danger. Her mom is a God knows what. Show it here. Because I don't know what it is. There's a witch. Grandma Aggie in true Grandma Aggie form is just like, well, shit. I guess we're done. <laughs> guess we'll see what happens in a hundred years when we come back. Aggie, no. She's lived for so long. She's like, do you know how many people I've seen die? Yikes. It's not really existential. <laughs> She's like, I don't care. Human life means literally nothing to me. It's like invincible when he's trying oh, to train his no. kid and he's like you're literally a blip on the radar to me you mean nothing to me you and your mom are like pets she's more like a, a pet to me a pet that's Aggie. you know i said she's been alive for sixty thousand years and she's only had one daughter maybe she's had a lot of daughters and they just keep dying and she doesn't care anymore oh fuck <laughs> that's the halloween town prequel i want to see there's gotta be something we can do i love them too can't change the rules. The two Halloween Town people have decided it's impossible. Those are the rules. That's just how it is. We can only transfer through the oh. world once a year. And Marnie said, fuck that. Not only am I an American and I do what the fuck I want. <laughs> 
I, I'm a human. We are stubborn. I'm an American. We are more stubborn. And I am a Cromwell witch. And we are not, are we not the most powerful witches there are? So she said, y'all better get your shit together because we are going to break that fucking door open. Woo-wee. And she fucking did. They all got together and started chanting. They busted that door open and they broke that shit. Now you can get through it any time. I love the pure determination to just go... Nah. nah. And they said, you can't go back. And you know that I love a, a good watch me moment where they're like, we can't get back home. And she goes, watch me. Marnie faces off with Cal and he pulls out the two spell books. It's like, hey, if you can grab them, they're yours. And fucking Aggie's like, hey, hey, be careful. Marnie, be careful. She's fucking standing there. I think grandma does have a trick up her sleeve. The trick up her sleeve is fucking Marnie. (laughs) Marnie does my work for me. That's the trick of my sleeve. Her training is the throwing the kid in the deep end to let him (laughs) teach him how to swim. She's just like, I mean, hopefully we don't drown. I've lived so many lifetimes and seen so many worlds, empires built and destroyed. I don't care about your world or mine. Why would I save a world I no longer have any stake in? How did we turn Agatha (laughs) Cromwell into a fucking eldritch god? (laughs) She's dark. I think Grandma Aggie plays the whimsical grandma who doesn't really think about anything, but I think if push came to shove, she would snap her 60,000-year-old fingers and let loose the power of all of Halloween Town because she probably created it with just her magic and she would literally obliterate all evil on Earth, but she chooses not to. I am the beginning and the end. (laughs) I am your alpha. I am your omega. I am Agatha Cromwell. (laughs) Marnie takes back the spell book, saves the day, casts Cal away, and I think that's the last we see of him, uh, until they marry in real life, which is, that's sweet. And if there's anything that this movie and Hocus Pocus teaches us, it's like, don't let your parents go to Halloween parties because that shit. I don't. That's where that shit goes down. Every time. Uh, that's Halloween Town 2, uh, Calabar's Revenge. And you know what? It's awesome. My initial thought when I first watched it was that it was more enjoyable than the first one. But now, honestly, I'd probably just watch the first one. I would pick the second Halloween Town because I feel like it gets into it a lot quicker. I obviously have a strong passion for the ending of it. It's definitely a pop for me. It's a pop for me. All right, now things start to go off the rails. So we're in Halloween Town 3, the third one, also known as Halloween Town High, which premiered on my sister's birthday. Cute. October 8th. It should not have been called Halloween Town High. Should have been called Halloween Town uh, 3. Hey, these kids from Halloween Town are coming to a normal ass high school and it's a normal high school. This takes place in a normal high school and we're barely in Halloween Town. This is all still the title. Yes, even this description is part of the title and Josiah's still editing this. Why the fuck are you still talking, Josiah? You've got to put all of these titles in. Fuck, now we're still talking, but it's still the title. Halloween Town 3. Halloween Town High is what this should have taken place in, but it's just Halloween Town people in a normal high school. The third one. I feel so sorry for our editor. That's, That's me. you. It's, I think it's been two years again. I don't know. Uh, I don't really give a shit, but... Um. <laughs> I was going to try to save my disdain for this movie so that it would be a surprise when nah, I give it a I'm stop going, at the I'm end. Whole ham. I guess I'll just be upfront about this. This is my least favorite one. I feel like nothing happened. Yeah. It wasn't interesting. Because it takes place at a normal boring school. I never want to watch it. And I didn't realize why I didn't like it. But then when you were like, we haven't been in Halloween Town this whole time. And the kids that are from Halloween Town are humans for Most 90% of the, of the movie. And I was like, damn, you're right. That's literally why I don't like this one. To explain what does happen in Halloween Town High, we open up with Marnie, who is now under investigation because she opened up the portal. She thinks that, oh shit, they're coming for me. And they're like, nah, girl, we like that. However, your proposal to integrate schools, not about that. We don't like integrating schools because we can't trust humans, to which I say, fair. People have changed. People are more tolerant now. In fact, I bet all the Cromwell magic that humans have changed. She said it. Yeah. You all heard it. She said it. We have no choice but to accept. You have until midnight on Halloween. This is all your fault. How is this my fault? Well, if Marnie had been properly trained, she wouldn't have ever said anything like that. Which is the danger of not letting your kids know their culture, know where they come from, and know that certain words carry a lot more weight than other words in different universes. Right. We know I'm almost at level two. Yeah, and that means you're still at level one. She's only at level two? It's not a great teacher, apparently. No! So Grandma Aggie drops off the exchange students at the school at the normal, boring high school in disguises. Boring. And their cover is that they're from Canada. And lose the tail. 
then we meet Marnie's new love interest. She's always got to have one. This guy's looking like a Ken doll reject or that, what'd you say, the American Pie kid? Yeah. Mr. Miller, if I could have your attention. <laughs> So then we get to Grandma Aggie's first class. Grandma Aggie doesn't need to be anywhere near <laughs> kids. And I had so hoped we could all be friends. <laughs> oh, shit. And that's how you keep the kids in line. Unfortunately, that is not a kid. That is a 40-year-old man with a full-time job and three kids. Oh, hi, Mr. Dalloway. Uh, the, the first day was amazing. Ethan and the kids are already settling into human life. I'm just thrilled to know that everything's going so well. Yep, we won't let you down. Not to sound like a broken record, but he's the bad guy, isn't he? <laughs> you immediately were like, well, obviously it's there the he is. It's the bad guy. I can't trust any man in this universe I anymore. You... Just remember, the hopes of all of Halloween Town. Run you, run you, run you. <laughs> I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. And now things are going to shit because these knights of the dagger who might as well just be the fucking Ku Klux Klan. They're this sheethead people. Sheethead people. Yeah, Pil whatever. They're the pillowcase people. Pillowcase. <laughs> so the knights of iron dagger are the pillowcase people for Halloween Town. They're leaving warnings. You just been poked. <laughs> Poked by the dagger. Yeah, and I literally wrote in my notes here that a lot of stuff happens that shows us the creatures aren't fitting in. Um, God, this movie just felt so much longer because it takes place in a human world. And there's not even any songs. <laughs> Which Ryan picks a fight at the mall because they're being stereotyped by in the, the Halloween stores. And people are afraid of them. They think that these are the real versions of the creatures. So now Marnie's whole program is in jeopardy. Ken Doll is not the bad guy, as it turns out. It's actually multiple villains, Principal Phil and Councilman Egger. They're in cahoots to ruin Marnie's bet and prove that humans are still the worst. How many of, of those bad guys did you guess? I definitely didn't guess Ryan. To be fair, didn't realize he was you the guy's son. I can't believe you, sister. Him. Honestly, Marnie, he's not, he, he's, oh, I hate paybacks. So then she fucking sicks her bag on the principal. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grandma Aggie. I have a few tricks up my sleeve. The tricks up my sleeve are murder. I'm going to send my <laughs> fucking bag to murder you. Oh, time travel. I could do that too. Nah, we don't want to do that. Why would I time travel really quickly and tell Marnie before she bets our magic on this stupid endeavor that maybe she shouldn't bet our magic on this stupid endeavor? And I got to ask, what was the plan, Grandma Aggie? Because the, the thing was, it was like, hey, check on your guy because he's <laughs> probably against us. And I she says, ah, I'll get my bag to eat him. <laughs> That'll get us answers. She lucks out because the bag brings back the ring to reveal that he is part of the dagger group. But yeah, what was her plan if he wasn't? Don't it's know. Like, oh, good. He's innocent and dead. And he's dead. <laughs> and my favorite part here is when Grandma Aggie explains to the only black man in the cast what bigotry is. Yeah. The men that originally wore those rings, they were bigoted, hideous, evil human beings. And to be honest... I'm a little surprised that it fits. Aggie! No, oh, Aggie's not a good character, is she? I mean, you've seen old people. At a certain point, they just don't care. And they've only been around for 60 years. 60,000? I wouldn't even know what good and evil were. Oh, yeah, there's a subplot here where the kids want to create a booth for the Halloween festival at the school. Hey, I'm thinking that the haunted house just isn't such a good idea. They're making a haunted house. And they're going to make a haunted house, but a not scary haunted house. An educational one. Yeah. Sounds boring. That was the worst haunted house I've ever seen. The ghost didn't even go boo. So the haunted house isn't doing well, which is the perfect opportunity for Councilman Egger to show up and try and fuck things up. And it starts an angry mob. Yeah. And I will say, like, at, in the chaos, I did think the giant... Like skeleton. What? Skeleton. I thought that was pretty cool. That's a cool effect. And then the angry mob proves Edgar right, and he's like, I'm taking your powers. And guess who loses their powers for a third Goddamn time. Yeah. It's Grandma Aggie. <laughs> Always. It's funny because I really do like Grandma Aggie. It's probably just because it's Debbie Reynolds. I just love her like light wispy acting where she's always like, ah. 
According to all the other actors, she always treated the kids with respect, never treated them like they were second class. But this is Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds is a fucking angel. Debbie Reynolds is a goddamn goddess and gave birth to Carrie Fisher. Grandma Aggie, on the other hand. And then all the Halloween towners rip their masks off and are like, hey, look, I'm not human. I'm really a werewolf. I'm an ogre. Ooh, it's a little bit of forest giant on my mother's side. And I'm a troll. I'm just going through an awkward stage. And then everybody's like, yeah, I guess that's cool. <laughs> so then the councilman is found out. He's banished. The Cromwells get their powers back. And thank God this movie's over. It's I, a stop for me. Benji, what's it for you? I said Halloween Town. Bye. Because oh, that one's a good too. Stop for me. All right, Benji. I think we're finally at the film that everyone's been waiting for. You return to Halloween Town, which came out October twentieth, two thousand and six. Obviously, elephant in the room. There's a new Marnie on the block, played by Sarah Paxton. The original Marnie was rumored to have been on a movie that was going to be at the same time, but according to her, no one ever asked her, no one ever reached out, and they decided to recast her role and only her role. Only her role. It's not yeah. even a reboot. And obviously. Grandma Aggie is no longer a major part of this film. Apparently, her role was going to actually be recast and played by Millicent Martin, who plays Professor Periwinkle later on. So, yeah, the professor character was definitely supposed to be... It was supposed to be Grandma Aggie, which is why she gives so much Grandma Aggie on screen. Yeah. Marty wants to go to college. She wants to dig deep, learn her powers, because she's one of the most powerful witches in Halloween Town. And her mom lets her know, with great power comes great responsibility. And what did Marty have to say to that, Josiah? You stole that from Spider Man. You stole that from Spider Man. <laughs> that was also in the in, trailers. In the trailer. Yeah. You stole that from Spider Man. We get to campus. Yeah. We are so excited. And then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are those notes of yours, Benji? Show off. Jealous. Pesino beneficium. <laughs> And then we find out no magic allowed on campus. Bull. Only for Marnie to be very frustrated because like, what the hell is Witch University if we can't use witch powers? To which we find out it's your fault because you combine the world and when a bunch of witches went to the human world to go to college, yeah. now we need to open enrollment to other creatures and it's an unfair advantage to use magic. Then we meet the Sinister Sisters. Josiah's favorite characters from this entire series. I'm not your type. They're just kind of like, try hard maybe? They're like, well, they're Disney high school mean girl villains. Like, yeah, yeah, but mean girls set the standard really high. The Sinisters continue to terrorize Marnie while having a writing assignment where before Scarlet Sinister leaves, she hexes Marnie's paper and makes all the words go away. That isn't my paper. And then the professor dude, who I guess we find out is later a villain. Shocker. He's like, yeah, man, you're in trouble. You're in trouble for using hexes. And I'm like, why would she have fucking hexed her own paper? And that then showed it to you. And he said, all I know is you have a hexed paper. I guess it makes sense later because you're a bad guy, but like... But Calm don't down. make it so obvious. I know, I know. Jeez. It's called subtlety, man. You know who had subtlety? Calabar. Calabar wasn't subtle. Calabar was a split personality. You know what Calabar would do when he wasn't being a villain? He'd give candy to children. He had a full-time other job as an upstanding citizen, and he took it seriously. He took it very seriously. This is the old castle dungeon. You will spend this semester unearthing the treasures of a millennium of Halloween town history buried beneath this castle. And guess who is here as our villains? Everyone that we suspected. Yeah, they said, ah, you thought you could outsmart us. Turns out they're all the bad guy. The child has found the ancient box which contains the gift. She's giving the warden from holes. Like, I'm gonna make these kids do my dirty work so I can find this secret hidden thing. Find treasure. She's tired of digging holes. <laughs> Marnie gets special permission from the Chancellor to open the box, and she tries everything. I'm talking every color spell, she tries it. Every wisp of magic, every hand motion, she tries but it. But did she use her sparkle fingers <laughs> or tingle fingers? Oh, uh, and she's definitely... and. That was a, uh, a note here. She did the Bewitched, and yeah. then she did I Dream of Jeannie. She definitely were two homages to famous witches. S. Cromwell? 
So Splendora Cromwell was the name that was on the box. Or S. Cromwell, S. Cromwell. was the name that was on the box. A Susan or a Sarah or... Splendora. I haven't heard that name in years. So you know her? And now Periwinkle has said, yeah, no, I know her. Uh, but I, I, I can't let you know her identity. I made a promise to keep Splendora's identity a secret. I just hate... I hate things like this because it's like after like what 50,000 years maybe just go it's your grandma she should have already told you let's go back in time and get the key there's a lot I've been I have been working on this case too let's end it but no she had to go <laughs> this is it's all we, she, <laughs> and we don't like to get things done no we don't we like the joy of the chase <laughs> <laughs> when a bunch of all-powerful, undying beings I mean, get bored, yeah. we just kind of play cat and mouse with you. It's Tom and Jerry. They're all Tom and Jerry. Oh, they just shit. run around and torment each other, but neither of them wants the other one to really die or be defeated fully because it's the fun of the chase. It's just a game for them. It's a 60,000-year game, and Marnie is just getting in on it, and her poor human brain can't comprehend why these evils keep rising, and everybody's so calm about it. It's because, Marnie, it's a game game it's a game they don't see good and evil the way you do you're just a fledgling human a baby witch you'll understand in about a thousand years they are the greek gods they don't uh. care about any of you they don't care about old marnie they don't care about remember what you said that gwen has only ever had one daughter but yeah. maybe they just keep dying because grandma <laughs> aggie keeps fucking them up this is a fucking multiverse marnie and she killed the original one <laughs> Because her goddamn training is lacking. Level one Marnie died. I gotta move to universe four Marnie. Grandma Aggie Gra is Rick Sanchez. <laughs> this is lit Halloween Town High is literally fucking Rick and Morty. It is a fucking smart ass person bumble fucking through the universe. And then when they don't like what their grandkids doing, they're just like, shit, I guess I'll just get another one. And you know what she said she was doing? She was traveling interdimensionally. Y'all, it's two in the morning. I mean, that's when the good stuff happens. Stop letting us let you realize <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Stop letting him make you realize stuff. Also, Dylan is down bad for, uh, Scarlet. for Scarlet. I don't blame him. As a gay, I look for strong, powerful, iconic women to follow. And you know what? I would carry her books every day. And I would brush her hair. And I would do what she told me to do. And I would say, you are my queen. <laughs> Your brother is becoming a problem. Then we must use him. Make him part of the solution. But he's her family. That just means she will do anything to save him. But because he's now a potential foil for the bad guys, they're like, hey, I'm going to make my daughters hit on him. And hopefully that distracts him. Yeah, we're going to put him out of commission because he's way too useful to Marnie. Ethan, it's beautiful. It was a gift from my dad. You said that this was in all the trailers. It was like a little music video they would play on Disney Channel. <laughs> Take me on a like we said, the si sister Sanderson Sinister 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 Synergy Sister. <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning now. The Synergy Sisters put all of their energy, you might say, their synergy <laughs> into taking over the brother. Yeah, you don't have power to control me, do you? That's from the trailer. Marnie goes to Periwinkle to travel back in time and Periwinkle's like, oh yeah, man, I can actually help you out with that. Unlike your grandma, I'll get shit done maybe. I don't know. I just like that Marnie came back with two quarters of new information and she's like, ah, now you're ready. And it's like, hey, hey, hey. Let's skip the foreplay <laughs> skip that. and go straight to believing me. So the amulet turns out to be uh, just a MacGuffin power control. I mean, they're all vague power oh control things. Guffin? The amulet is a power of absolute control. In this amulet is the power of absolute control. Which no one in Halloween Town has. With it, I can will anyone to do anything. It's like amazing. I can control hearts and minds. And that's what everybody's trying to get at. You don't want that? But the amulet is a McMuffin, so. No, it's a McGuffin. Get, yeah, yeah, they got their McMuffin. Um, So clearly they got to McDonald's before 11, <laughs> which is really like, that's good for them. Because I have a hard time with that. <laughs> I haven't had a McMuffin in a long time. <laughs> Long visit short, we found out that Splendora Cromwell is Splendora Agatha Cromwell. Surprise, surprise, it's- It was Agatha all along! 
I also bum, guessed bum, that. Bum, 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 ba, dum, bum. At first, I thought it was Periwinkle, which I guess now I wasn't far it's off because Periwinkle yeah. was supposed to be Agatha. Mm-hmm. So I guessed Periwinkle at first, and I was like, oh, it's probably just the grandma. Yeah. Also, apparently, the pumpkin of Halloween Town came from Marnie. I just don't get why she even gave it to her. Because she knows how important it is to Halloween Town. Again, for someone mm-hmm. who is so integral to the history of Halloween Town, you'd think people would put some respect to her name. Marnie comes back with the amulet, but gets taken by the Chancellor. She just, things are getting away from her. She doesn't know what to do. Then Mom shows up. Yeah, and I will say, Mom's got a fierce witch outfit. Not only am I here to help, but I'm here to slay. And finally (laughs) embrace her witch heritage. Finally embrace it and actually be helpful, unlike my mom. For some reason, the Dominion's plan, because they can't wield the Amulet of Power, so they're basically blackmailing her to name them the rulers of Halloween Town. As soon as Marnie agrees to work with us. (laughs) And then the spell will be permanent at midnight. We have a little coronation for her as Queen of Halloween Town, which like, fun, I would have done that too. She gets them to turn back her brother. I'm gonna put on this amulet. I'm gonna make y'all think that I'm cooperating with you. And then surprise, I have a plan. My genie RA is gonna suck up the gift into her lamp and then we're gonna destroy it with the power of three Cromwells. They went all this roundabout way to do this. I would raise you, Marnie. When they give you the gift, turn around and go, change my brother back. Break up the Dominion. Oh, shit. Don't be evil Can she anymore. do this? I mean, I still enjoy it. I still think as far as Halloween Town goes, it's a great ending. Good job, boys. This is ridiculous. Persimmon Periwinkle, Agent Periwinkle of the Halloween Town Anti-Dominion League. Preposterous. What's preposterous is how long I've been undercover. Ten centuries. <laughs> Why don't you tell us how you feel? Ten centuries? <laughs> She's been undercover for ten centuries? And what the fuck did she do? She was waiting for what? For a, a 16, 18 year old? Ten centuries is the best plan she could come up with? Yep. Yeah, I mean, who is she based on? Who is she supposed to be? Fucking Agatha. <laughs> Fucking goddamn Agatha. Even in proto form. Even when it's not even Agatha, she is fucking useless. You've been on this case for a thousand years. And when I come and ask you about it, the one person who can actually do something about it, you tell me I'm not ready? Yeah, she needs There's... another 900 years, <laughs> right? Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're really trying to stop them. And I feel like you don't get the point of what we're doing. This is all a game. We're having fun. This is a game. This is why the humans said we need to go because we were <laughs> you're constantly putting their lives in peril and we thought it was hilarious. And then basically we find out that the gift was not destroyed. Marnie just transported it to someone that she trust completely. I would love to see a Halloween Town 5 where Dylan has taken the gift and has become a completely unstoppable tyrant and we have to figure out how to vanquish him. I would love to see a Buffy the Vampire Slayer Willow Goes Dark moment with Dylan because it's always when the good one goes bad, they go real bad and it's fun. That's it. That's Halloween Town 4 Return to Halloween Town. For all of you Halloween Town fans out there, I do apologize This one is my favorite. This one is super nostalgic to me because it came out and I was a part of the whole branding and the advertising and the premiere. And I like Sarah Paxton, so it's just right here in my heart. So pop or stop, you're a pop. Yeah. (laughs) I don't hate it. You can give it a stop just because they iced out. I just feel it's really shitty. Like it's really, just reboot the whole fucking thing. Like, don't keep everybody but the main person. That's shitty. It's a stop because it doesn't line up for multiple reasons with the other films. The other films don't line up with the other films. Like, look, man, honestly, I'm going to say the first one's probably uh, 
the one I would rewatch. So this was Halloween Town, all of them, all the Halloween Towns. That was a fun experience. I didn't grow up with them, so it's easier for me to poke holes in the logic because it doesn't hold the same special place in my heart. Do I want to say it's overrated? No, they're, they're fine. They're what they are. I will, however, call out Grandma Aggie because she is useless. Oh my God. <laughs> Fucking useless. You can even like Grandma Aggie. Just admit, she doesn't do shit. I love Grandma Aggie, and I will say in her defense, as I've been saying, <laughs> no, no, it's not that she's useless, she's just playing a different game. Got it. <laughs> Really quickly before we get started. <laughs> what the fuck is that? What creature is that? <laughs> it's like a fucking alien fish. <laughs> it looks so gross. He, he looks like he knows he shouldn't be on camera. <laughs> he looks like he shouldn't mm -hmm. be in this universe. He looks like SpongeBob Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Oh my god. Oh, you know what that looked like? It looked like a flubel or a flu. Yeah, I was gonna say. Floop is a madman. Help, help us save us. Floop is a madman. Help us save us. Apparently, mom used to date the boogeyman. Yeah. That's just a throwaway they line. They did casually throw that one out. Can I tell you a funny story? Really, I'll try to make this really quick. When I was in pre K, I thought that the boogeyman was an army man and he was green because he was covered in boogers and that's why they called him the boogeyman. And I thought we were scared of him because he was gross, not because he would kill us. Oh, you was were that stupid. quick? <laughs> that's it for today. I think that's pretty much all I have. Uh, if you didn't like this video and you're still watching it, fucking like the video. <laughs> Come on, do it. And if you aren't subscribed, you should do that and then hit the bell for notifications because a lot of times people don't know that we've posted something. And you want to be here for this live, like you've if you've been here, like when it was posted, then you're you're in the chats. We're responding to you. It's live. It's fun. And then also check out Patreon. Yeah. If you want extra content, because it's definitely there. Until next time, I'm Rizzo. I'm Benji. Sweet dreams, pop stars. Keep watching. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>